Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and I am with Chris Kohler of Kotaku. How's it going, man? Oh, very good. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming on, dude. So, please tell people why you are here today. Well, I heard that you're going to go to Japan soon, and yes. I thought that you were going to need some tips about buying Japanese video games, and I'm all about that, so that's what I'm here to do. This is going to be awesome because I heard you are the expert. I am an expert. All right, let's take a look. Where do you want to? Where do you want to start with this? Um, well, let's okay. Let's assume you're not going to Japan, okay. uh, viewer, and you know, say that you want to start collecting imports here, and say that you already started doing it, and maybe you want some more tips for how to do it from the comfort of your own home here in you know America right. or wherever you may be. Um, I mean, first of all, it's certainly something that I've learned from going to Japan and, and checking out different places to buy things is that honestly, right now, like eBay prices are not that different in many cases from what you pay at a store in Japan. Um, huh. So I mean, don't worry so much that you're like getting ripped off on eBay because especially if it's an auction, you're probably not. Okay, so this is really interesting. So mm -hmm. I've I've gone on eBay to potentially buy Japanese games and yeah. I kind of, I, I get a, I, I put the brakes on because I'm like, I don't understand. Like, will the shipping? Is it going to be complicated? Mm -hmm. How mm -hmm. long is it going to take? Right. Are there additional taxes? I don't know. So yeah. you're saying that at least on eBay, don't worry about it. If it's there, just just buy. They'll get it to you. I, I would say. I mean, I would say definitely. I mean, we're going to talk about other places to get it also. Okay. But like, eBay is a good first stop. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of sellers that are based in Japan that sell stuff on eBay. Um, you know, shipping costs. It it can get expensive, but like if you're using like the absolute fastest best shipping but in a lot of cases if you're patient the, the thing with with thing with Japanese sellers is that you know sometimes you buy something on eBay you know in America and they don't package it well right um, Japanese sellers tend to package stuff really well okay. for the long international trip like anything I've ever bought from Japan um, on eBay is you know very nicely bubble wrapped maybe there's an extra layer of cardboard around it you very know lovingly packaged exactly so <laughs> you know it's gonna make it to you okay. um, in okay. good shape so I, I generally have no problem just going with the cheapest shipping option um, if you want to buy a lot of stuff from the sellers try writing to them and saying hey I'm interested in this 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 is this you know can I can I get a discount on shipping because you know then you're going to save a lot more money if yeah. it's not all in individual That's packages. Um, but but in general, the fact that the stuff is in Japan and you have to kind of pay for it to get shipped over here. If you paid for it to ship it over here uh, and then you were buying it from from somebody who had bought it from Japan, you're probably paying an inflated price. So Yahoo Auctions, which was a thing in the U.S. for a little while, um, actually became the major auction site in Japan. Hmm. Okay. So if you know Japanese. Great. Well, it, it helps if you know Japanese because then you can. And and if you don't know Japanese, I'm not going to say go learn the entire Japanese oh, language. Oh, okay. So this is a site that is in Japanese. It's all entirely okay. in Japanese. Now there's ways around. This. I was going to say, can you use the Google Chrome? You know how it gives you the translate option. So for some, yes. So yes, sort of. But okay. of course, you know, even if it's it, Google Google Translate is going to have a problem with like translating the name of a game into Japanese. Okay. So it does get a little hairy. And then also, if you're using Google Translate, you might not necessarily understand the term. Of, of the auction. Yeah. So this is what to do for Yahoo auctions. Um, there are proxies. Oh, first of all, a lot of the Yahoo auction uh, sellers won't even send to the US. So you shouldn't even be directly trying to bid on any of those items by yourself anyway, oh, okay. um, because they won't ship it outside Japan. Oh, okay. So what you got to do is you have to use a proxy service. Um, now this sounds shady. Is it shady? It, it uh, so it, it can be, but it's but it's not. There's really <laughs> okay. good ones out there. I was there's, just teasing. I have yeah, no okay. idea. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, basically, what you do is there's there's a lot of companies now that their whole business is they are based in Japan. They buy stuff from Japan and then they charge you a fee and then they send it to you. Oh, okay. Yeah, and so the so one not that, shady. Not not shady. <laughs> not shady. I mean, it, it, again, it seems shady. It's like, can I trust these people? Right. That was the thing. Is it yeah. proxies? It seems you know. So I use a service called Zen Market. There's a lot of good ones. I'm not saying this is the best one. This is the one that I've landed on and just use. Um, they charge you 300 yen a package, so like three dollars, so like not much. Hmm. And what they do is they will buy stuff. So you can go to their site and you can enter in uh, search terms or enter in even URLs of products that are on Yahoo Auctions or like Amazon Japan or other sites. Really, I had no idea. Yep, yeah. and they will they'll 
pull the, they'll, they'll pull it, they'll machine translate it for you. And then importantly, they will say, you can actually use it to snipe Yahoo auctions. Huh. So you can enter in your snipe bid and they will enter it for you at the last minute. Okay. Interesting thing about Yahoo Auctions, it has something that eBay doesn't, which is it, Yahoo Auctions has optional snipe protection, which means that if you snipe it, it extends the end of the auction by a few minutes. But you still, I mean, it's it's still probably a good idea to be sniping anyway, and yeah. just hoping that nobody yeah keeps bidding. But either way, they'll snipe the auction for you, and then, or I mean, if it's just an item on you know um, Amazon Japan or other sites, they'll buy it for you. Um, it'll ship to their warehouse. Cool thing about Zen Market. The warehouse, they will hold stuff for you for 45 days and they'll bundle it all together in a package. So if you want to buy a bunch of games, but the auctions all end at different times, you can just oh. wait for all the stuff to, you can wait 45 days for everything to get there. And then they'll put it all in a package for you and send it out. I am so going to do this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and in my mind, yeah. I'm also thinking too, that because <clears throat> it's their business, they understand customs. Yes. So they, they yeah. it's not gonna be some individual who's doing a one-off. Right. They know how to get something through customs yes. securely, safely. Yep, and so it is, that's true. And and right. again, the packages that I've gotten from them are very safe. I have never, I can't speak for, you know, all everything sure. that ever happens in the world. I've never had customs come to me and say, you know, for buying a video game, that's $100 and say, oh, you owe us duties for this, mm -hmm. you know? I, I've just never had it happen to me, but it, it is your responsibility if you do buy things that are worth a lot of money and they're labeled on there as being worth a lot of money, you might owe additional taxes, duties. Um, sure. But that's but ultimately that's something that you have to deal with as a person that's like yeah. importing yeah. goods into, yeah. into the US. And the thing is, you know, if you know some people will ask the seller like oh can you write that it's a gift and has zero value you know um that's not something that you're going to do with these big business proxy services like they 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 they're not going to skirt the the boundaries of what's okay yeah, like that yeah. so you know you do have to you have to bear that in mind okay. um but honestly as a service i i found zen market to be really helpful and the other thing is so there's yeah there's two major things you should really look at if you're if you want to start searching sites in japanese and you know try to do the translation thing. There is a site called uh, Surugaya, S-U-R-U-G-A-Y-A. -Y -A. Okay. They have a store in Akihabara in Japan. Uh, they're a big seller of used games, used computer games, used video games, everything. Hmm. And their site has everything. You know, their site has tons and tons and tons of stuff. Huh. And yeah, they're like, I don't even know how to compare them because they're such a huge seller of like, it's it's like I can't even I can't even think of an analog to it in the U.S. that would be a big online seller of used games and stuff like that. Um, but you can buy their stuff through Zen Market also. So you literally can take the URL for something that's on Sudagaya, pop it into Zen Market. They it, you they will buy it for you and then they'll they'll ship it to you. This is amazing. <laughs> yeah, I'm so excited. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and that's and that really is how you will get the best deals by yeah. bidding on auctions and things like that um, through Japanese sites. Now, if you want, it it might be a good idea to go take like Japanese 001 at the local yeah, college. That's true. Because if you can learn just the phonetic Japanese alphabets and you can then you can write most names of video games and mm. search for them and, and just sort of have an idea of what it is you're looking at. You, you know, for me, uh, whenever we, we do videos on my channel about imports, I really just kind of rely on uh, Wikipedia because they often do have yep. the Japanese English translation of it. Yep. And that seems to work out pretty well for me. Yeah. Um, and it's you know quick and dirty, but you're absolutely right. right. I mean, if you're going to be doing a lot of that, it certainly makes sense to at least know some some basics. Right. Like there's there's you know if for written Japanese there's like there's over two thousand characters you need to know, hmm. but that's but the, for the phonetic alphabets, which will let you write everything, you know, you only need to learn about a hundred different characters. So I mean, you can actually you can do it. You can do it. Okay. I yeah. Had no idea. Yep. So another thing that I wanted to say, and we've been talking kind of about like how do you get like older games? How do you get retro right. games? Uh, how do you how do you get used stuff? Um, if you are at all interested in buying new Japanese games, which you certainly might be, especially for like the Nintendo Switch, yeah. because like. For example, there's a lot of games where the only physical version is in Japan, yep. but it still plays in English if you pop it into your US Switch because it's region free. Um, uh, Japanese art books, music CDs, stuff like that. If you're looking at newer stuff, I would say uh, look into Amazon Japan. 
Because <laughs> what a lot of people do not know, and, and the thing is, like back in the day, I used to order from places like Play Asia, which yep. I think you've used. I've, I've done that. I used to order from like National Console Support and various other you know places that that would bring in Japanese stuff and sell it at a markup. Amazon Japan, not only does Amazon Japan ship to the US cheaply, oh. but if you go to the Amazon Japan webpage, you will see a little globe that probably says JP next to it and click that and click EN instead. And Amazon Japan will natively, not machine translated, Amazon Japan will natively display in English. I have no idea. And now it will <laughs> natively amazing. let you, it will let you browse by category in English. Huh. And then you can search in English and it will then sort of machine, try to machine translate it. Hmm. Um, it they ship video games to the US. They ship books and CDs and stuff like that, and hmm. toys and video game related merchandise. A lot of that stuff, especially if it's sold by Amazon and not a third party, okay, right. ships to America. They have a deal, I think, with like DHL, um, and it is it's so cheap. It is so cheap to get stuff. I bought a um, what did I just get? I think I got like a, a a music CD off of Amazon Japan, and the shipping to me in California was under ten dollars. Huh. They, they, they're basically like, it's, it's just like Amazon. It's not Amazon Prime, obviously, yeah. but, 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 but it was also fast. It was like, it took days to get there. And so like 100%, like get yourself an Amazon Japan account. And also, I mean, again, like you're not paying marked up prices. You're actually paying the price that the Japanese people who shop on Amazon are paying in yen. Oh, right. And, and the dollar is stronger than the yen yeah, right now. Right. So you're actually paying even less. Like it, you might really surprise yourself by looking at Amazon Japan and yeah. seeing what you can buy there. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. Yeah, because you're right. I use PlayAsia a lot. Mm -hmm. But I mean, and I, I do like their site yep. by all means, but it, you know, you can potentially eliminate the middleman. Right, exactly, exactly. Huh. And just pay Japan prices. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right, so I noticed that you have some games over here. I have some games because I kind of wanted to talk about like, you know, the idea of like, well, why buy imports and, and maybe we can get some other kind of like um, you know, tips out of that as well. Yeah. So this is actually, I mean, this is like one of the first ones that I ever got. And actually, well, this copy of Act Razor, Act Razor is one of my favorite Super Nintendo games. I love it so much. And uh, I bought this when I was living in Japan back in the day. I think it's actually brand new. I think I got that at a, um, a mom and pop electronics store mm. um, that, uh, that just had, they had like that, they had a brand new Mega Drive. And I mean, literally like it, we were talking like 10, 20 bucks for both of them, you know? Yeah. Um, but I mean, this was one of the first Super Famicom games that I bought and it's like if you look at the US box for ActRaiser it's like a cloud uh, and a lightning strike over a pyramid and it's like okay whatever but like yeah. look at the Japanese box for ActRaiser it's so gorgeous yeah. if you love this game it's so beautiful um, it's so well designed it's weird when they do that you know what I mean yeah. I don't understand the marketing behind that it's like nah this is they won't like this. So the, the way know. that I understand it, yeah, I mean, certainly there was that sense of like, oh, this will not be to the Americans' tastes. Um, because of course, you know, I mean, back when this came out in like 91, like, like that style of graphic design was not really popular. Like anime graphics were not considered uh, to be something true. that was popular. That's true. Yeah. But additionally, apparently it's because um, in Japan, you go to the video game stores and all the games are like right here, like right on the shelf, you're looking, oh, you, can, okay. you can examine all the details. In America, the games are locked up, you know, back in the day, they were locked up in a case or way back. Yeah, that's true. Um, and so everything had to be very readable from like 10 feet behind yeah. the counter. Um, and so that's kind of why like the American boxes are a lot more, like instead of like, um, even if you look at like Super Mario World, the Japanese box is very detailed, has all the enemies of the game. You know, the, yeah. where the US box is just one picture of Mario and Yoshi. Oh, it's like it has to be super readable from far away. That's a but good it, point. Yeah, but it I creates remember, things that don't look as good in your collection. I remember going into, I, I think it was uh, what, what, uh, Toys R Us or something like that. And they had a little, you had to pull the, the pull sheet off and yep. walk up there and you have to like, you, you have to look beyond the counter to yeah. see it. Yep. That makes sense though. Yeah, but just this, I mean, hmm. there's, there's just so much to love about this. The Super Famicom, boxes too they're vertically oriented yeah, like, like this that. and just they have just so much more space to do whatever they wanted to and yeah. it's just nice to have a collection of super famicom games because they all it's like these they're the most beautiful versions and they're the original versions of these games that i really love especially so and also too it's worth uh <clears throat> reminding people that even if you don't know japanese you can like say on something like a retron 5 you can actually plug this in and then there are english patches that's that right add, which yep. is pretty it's, it's a cool feature of that console yeah for sure Huh. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Um, I also brought a copy of the uh, Japanese Saturn version of Nights into Dreams. Nice. Um, another game. Another great game. 
Um, and you know, what I especially want to point out about this is that while people do love collecting Japanese Sega Saturn releases, um, again, not only is the graphic design really, really nice, I mean, even with this, you got this like weird paragraph of text on the cover, uh, yeah. and, like all kinds of like. It's cool. in English too, right? Yeah, it is yeah. in English, yeah. <laughs> Just really cool, like graphic yeah. design elements for this game. And then uh, also, they're in, you know, small jewel cases. Yeah. The collection, I think, maybe displays a little bit better. It, it, definitely more sturdy than the original. Yeah, no kidding, right? Cases, right, yeah. Um, and then additionally, I mean, this this copy of this game that I bought really points out an important point about a lot of um, imports, especially games that might be some of your favorite old Japanese games from back in the day. I bought this in Japan recently for a dollar. This was 108 <laughs> yen. It was less than a dollar. I mean, when you yeah. know, the exchange rate was probably 90 something cents. Wow. That's and compared really to, I mean, Knights is not it's a soup. It's in great condition. And it's in wonderful it like condition. It's brand new. <laughs> it does. It does. Yeah. It's in a sleeve, but you know, it's not brand yeah. new. But it's got the spine card. And oh, yeah. Everything is totally mint. And that's the thing. You, you start buying Japanese stuff. Well, first of all, you can buy beautiful mint copies of some of your favorite games and get the Japanese version and it's like a dollar. Yeah. You know, I and mean, when it's when it's stuff like this. Um you can go to Japan now and pay a buck for these. And you can actually go into eBay and probably pay like five or six plus shipping. But, I know, am hoping to do this. I think I you know what you will be able to do this. Um huh. and so it's just it's it's like a much cheaper way, <laughs> you know, honestly to collect all yeah, that stuff. It's there true. are some examples of games where the Japanese like Castlevania Bloodlines, like in the US it's like well it's like maybe a hundred bucks if you're really nice one in japan that game on mega drive uh, is like six or seven hundred dollars so i mean there's some oh, instances, really? yeah okay. but in most cases if you think about it like the games that the games that we fondly remember from the 16-bit era that were from japan in japan those games were really popular like they, they, oh, they wasn't like in, copies. yeah they sold tons of them like final mm -hmm. fantasy 6 is like the madden 95 of japan <laughs> they sold three whatever million yeah and they're all over the place yeah um and so you know it's, it just makes it a lot easier to buy stuff right. so yeah i mean cool if you're if you like stuff like knights like dollar yeah can't beat a buck what can you get in the u.s for a buck i got a copy of brett hall hockey 95 for the genesis for a dollar the other day <laughs> that's what you can get for a dollar in america amazing um what is that one I, there? I have I have one more now. I know I know you love your your PC big boxes. I do. So I wanted to bring something that would really really make you jealous and want what? to murder That's me here PC. in your basement. And um, this is yeah. So this is Final Fight uh, for the X sixty eight thousand, which oh, is a Japanese wow. PC yeah. format. Um, I don't have a lot of, of Japanese PC big box games. I, mean, I have like, I have more than probably like you know the this average is, this person. This is like in a America, Neo Geo but, you know. case yeah. here, isn't it? Yes. So imagine all of the things huh. that you love about PC big box games in America. Well, Japanese PC big box games are all of that and then better. <laughs> Like uh, that's they, quite the claim, they, but okay. It is <laughs> the I mean, if you think about it, I mean, it's taking uh, all of the just the absolute beautiful design yeah. you see on Japanese gaming wow, boxes. Look at those custom look labels. Look at the, the labels. The labels are incredible. Oh, I should have brought. I have um, I have Street Fighter Two Champion Edition also for the X sixty eight thousand. Um, and um, the labels are like this beautiful graphic of like Chun Li's eyeball. Like it's it's really it's. I guess I'm underselling it, but it's really cool. Yeah. So this is yeah for the X sixty eight thousand. And again, I got this in um, a store called uh, Beep that I'll talk about a little bit later hmm. in Akihabara in Japan, in Tokyo. And this was being sold as, it was like, it was in their junk section. And they're like, the discs have mold on them, you know? And not like, not like, not like gross. You yeah, know? I, I, I didn't mean, notice I'm, I'm it. Talking, no, 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 I'm talking about like, if you like examine the disc, you might see a little spot here and there, but oh. the disc probably won't work. Oh. Yeah, it's not like, I wouldn't bring like, you know, black mold in my house <laughs> or whatever. But it was like 20 bucks. And huh. I was like, hey, guess what? Not only do I not care that it doesn't work, I'm never going to own uh, the X68000 computer. So I'm not actually going to be playing this off of these discs. Yeah. I just want, I love Final Fight. It's the same thing was with ActRaiser. If you love a game like this, um, this is the this is the most gorgeous version of Final Fight that I can imagine. Hmm. It's it's in a big plastic case. It's got the the beautiful Final Fight artwork yeah. on the cover. It's huge. Yeah, it's cool. it's just I mean it's just incredible. It's and gonna again, last forever like, in this plastic. I mean no no PC. Then I don't think I ever saw this. Right. 
And it, they had to switch over to yep. DVD size. I mean, there are point. there are a lot of Japanese PC big box that is cardboard box. Sure. And the plastic case is not the usual. No. Um, no. But I mean, this is just really something that you know, getting into import collecting, I started you know seeing these, and some of these, I mean, unfortunately, some of these go for like ridiculous amounts of money. The really cool ones, but I mean, for this, for for twenty bucks yeah. for a non-working copy with this beautiful, beautiful box and everything, I was like, wow. I can't pass that. That's pretty cool. Yep. Where can people find out more about you? Okay, so I'm Features Editor at Kotaku, so you can type in kotaku.com and search for Chris Kohler, and you'll probably find the things that I write. I write a lot about old games, um, and I also have a show, a video, an intermittent video show that we do called Complete In Box, in which we kind of take one or maybe multiple games uh, and, and kind of look back at old games by not just like looking at the, you know, the ROM, but by, by actually looking at the box, looking at the yeah. manual, what do they come with? with what does all that stuff tell us about the history of the game? It's history show. It's um, awesome. And I'm, I'm on that show. And, yeah, by the time, um, I, oh, actually, I don't know. I mean, either, yeah. I, depending on when this video goes up, you you either will have been yeah. or will be yes. on a really fun episode. Yeah. Um, and thank you for that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Thanks for coming on and sharing. Thanks so. for having me. It's really, I'm, I'm surrounded by video games and I feel very comfortable. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And take care. I want to thank Chris and his camera guy again for coming up to Seattle, hanging out for an entire day. We shot a bunch of videos. Actually, not only uh, he and I, but he hung out with Kelsey at Pink Gorilla and shot videos there. It was a very productive day. And by the way, the reason why I'm showing this Virtual Boy footage here is because years ago, I bought my Virtual Boy from him at the Seattle Retro Gaming Expo. It's a very small world. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.